I spoke so much recently about Blu-rays, DVDs, moving away from um, the streaming packages. It's not removing them entirely, but reducing them and reducing that reliance upon them. So collect your favourite shows and your favourite movies. You're not burdened by any new law rules that come out, really, and um, really restrictions. I'm sick of it because you've obviously got the password restrictions. You've got this thing with the adverts. And I wouldn't be surprised, I've talked about it before, where Prime, where if you buy films, obviously you can watch it even if you haven't got Prime, but I wouldn't be surprised in the future if you have to have a subscription just to be able to watch the films you own. These Things adapt, they change, it gets worse over time. Um, I really should be an affiliate of Music Magpie. I don't know if they do an affiliate scheme, but I deserve to be part of it because <laughs> um, I keep talking about them. But to me, to be honest, in terms of being a buyer, they're one of the best places to get used content from. Music um movies tv shows they don't always have everything in stock sometimes you might want something specific and unfortunately it's just not there um or maybe it just run out you know so there is shop around we've got cex as well of course we've got ebay and you've got other ways but really they're my main ways and amazon of course um but what i really like about music magpie that sets itself apart from the other other potential um choices is it's cheap but also they do this multi-buy thing which i just think puts things into perspective it makes it so much better and you can mix and match. So, for instance, depending on, you know, so they have like a category. So you can have two for free or four for five pound. So two for three pound or four for five pound. That's all part of the same package. So, of course, if you only want two films, you pay three quid. If you want four films, it's five pound. That's good. It gets cheaper as you go. But you can mix that between like DVDs and Blu-rays. So you can always have a look. You can use the filter to, min to, to minimize that. It includes an awful lot of quality content. But also within music as well. Um, this one's the buy one, get one free section. This one's the two for five pounds. So you would argue is probably more expensive quality content. But there'll be still be great stuff in the four for five pound. Look, for instance, Madonna's Immaculate Collection. That's um, a classic. Avril Lavigne. You've got Lady Gaga, Coldplay. Um, Fuji's REM that's one of my favourite albums of ever Automatic for the People incredible but effectively Outlook Bon Jovi Nickelback Snow Patrol Eyes Open I love Snow Patrol this is just like the first page and there's going to be hundreds of these pages so effectively this is the way I look at it and I think it's great so recently today literally I had um, an external DVD drive sent to her home um, so she can connect it to a MacBook. You can connect a MacBook, laptop, whatever, computer. Effectively, it just gives it more compatible, more um, functionality. So you can start playing DVDs and CDs. And it's like, wasn't it very expensive? And it's like, it's great. Um, you can obviously get a Blu-ray drive version, which is a lot more money, because I don't know how much you'll use it. I didn't want to invest that heavy at the moment. But I mean, I've got one attached here. I don't know if I, I can't really show it because I don't think the lead will be long enough. Um, and literally last night, I'm sat at the computer chilling out, looking at YouTube, looking at all different windows and things. So I had on the other screen, I had this, this, the 70s show playing through my external drive connected to the laptop. So it's pretty cool. But like I say, it can play music as well. So it opens people up, especially our kids, to the physical media that we grew up with. You know, they can start collecting themselves, they can get into it. So literally, it's not about collecting everything and anything. It's like, what means something to you you know like what's your favorite music what's your favorite movies what's your favorite tv shows and then you've got a tangible physical copy of it so no one can ever take it away from you you know if a license agreement changes or like the streaming services remove it um, or, or if the rules change or it gets too expensive you know because effectively a lot of the time we're paying for services because we have an attachment to something and um, like for instance when disney plus come out i'm sure there's a lot of people that had a lot of disney films and as soon as Disney Plus come out, they probably thought, I don't need these films, I might as well sell them. And what they did, what they didn't realise was they already owned a substantial portion of what Disney Plus offers. And they never had to pay anything anymore because they already owned it. There was no need to pay anything. But of course, it seems convenient. There's a big library, you get caught up in it. But the price keeps increasing. So now they've lost that at a very low um, gain. You wouldn't have made much money selling them. And then you're bound by the, by, by the policy of Disney Plus. Um, but if you'd kept the films, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been reliant upon it. You wouldn't have needed the service. So effectively, you've gone from never having to pay anything because you already owned it to now you're paying every month for the best of your life. You know, it doesn't make sense. Just get the content and be done with it. Um, for the most part, 
Because the real problem is, is that the streaming platforms it used to just be one or two. Now it's just now they've just now like the content is so split between so many. If you want to watch this film, you need that one. You want that show, you need that one. All of a sudden, you're subscribing to all of them. So many, and it's that's, that's where the expense is coming. Um, you subscribe to one, you're missing loads. It's like oh, but I can't, I can't keep doing this. I'm not an octopus. I would just go to my bookshelf, you know, my shelves and go and have a look at what my collection is. But like I say, I want my daughter to have that option too. And I want her to have that connection to the content um, in the same way she's got her books on a bookshelf. It'd be nice if she's just got like favorite movies and TV shows as well, just on there. Again, it's not about collecting every movie in existence. It's just the ones that actually hold some sort of semblance of um, familiarity with yourself and you're connected to it, you know. So literally, in fact, because I mean, like, Kids are like this, and she's like this. She she's got little posters, little things she gets printed and puts them on the wall. It might be a cover of a of a of a, um, a CD cover or something, and it's just an image. And it's like, why not just have the physical disc? Like, why not just have the whole thing there and have your whole favorite movie there? You know, and that's what I think's great about places like Music Magpie. Like I said, it's mix and match, two for three pound, four for five pound. It's almost like a market, <laughs> but you can. So the way I see it is, you give a kid ten pound. You know, they don't have to do it every week, of course. You can just do it once a month, but they spend the £10. Maybe that, that's what they spend it on. So then you can literally, if you, if you even it out, you could literally treat yourself to four films and four CDs. So every month you're building your library up, or maybe you get two CDs and six films. Or you get more CDs. You know, it depends on what, you, what, you, what your main interest is. And by having that external drive, they get into that where they can really start embracing it. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm hoping I've started a trend here where we don't lose that attachment to the physical because, to be honest, everywhere is changing. Everywhere is trying to get us to go subscription models. That's literally everything wants us on a subscription model, literally tied to content for the rest of our life with a fee attached to it, even though it was a lot cheaper just to own it and be done with it. Um, and that's going to piss a lot of people off in the future, in all honesty. When you're that self-reliant and you have your own library, and everybody else is hemorrhaging money. Let's say Netflix in a few... I can see it. It's quite obvious. Netflix is already up to about 20 quid a month nearly for the 4K package. It ain't going to stop there. There's going to be a time, because of the amount of content there, and they'll say how expensive it is to produce and how much the license agreements are changing because people are greedy. So they probably will have to pay more to license agreements because they, the people that are supplying the content, they know there's a big, there's a big um, user base there and they want more money. It's going to happen. It happens in every sort of media package. So Netflix will one day will be about forty, fifty pound a month. It'll be like your main hub, but then all the others are also going to want a slice of that as well. They're going to say if Amazon, if Netflix is getting forty pound, we want something similar. For you know, you're paying one hundred and twenty pound a month for all these packages, just to replace the normal TV. But in the end, even if you didn't have them and you had normal TV, there's not that much genuine content on there anyway. You may again, you may as well just own shit. So effectively, a lot of people are going to be hemorrhaging money in subscription services for the rest of their life. And the ones that aren't are going to seem as troublemakers. But really, it's like you just fought ahead and you started building that collection early on. Um, okay, maybe they don't put... One day, maybe they stop releasing new content to physical. Okay, I'm happy with what I got. Okay, I won't see much new stuff then. You know, it doesn't mean I won't have one package or another. But once it gets to a certain price, I'm not going near it. And that's just the way it is. Um, sheer principle. It's ridiculous. Um, and once your library is big enough, it really doesn't matter anyway, does it? <laughs> you see what I mean? Um, but yeah, like I say, I think these deals on Music Magpie are just ridiculously cheap. And, and to be honest, it's been like that for quite a while. It's just a case of, because it's a used library, it really depends on how much of that stock is in stock. But they've got so much and people always trade in. And I just think there's, there is a section of people now, and I'm seeing it online. I'm seeing it as well that there's a there's a subsection of people, a bit like myself, who are starting to collect um, physical media. So it won't go away, but there'll be a point where some people maybe try and jump on too late. Where you know, because there's always going to be a tipping point, but people might try and jump on too late when when there's less uh, used available and the prices maybe even be higher as a consequence. Um, can't see that being the foreseeable future though, because I think there's a lot of content floating around in the uh, you know. But yeah, I think um, it's been a big part of my content lately. It's because I fight against injustice. My whole lifestyle is, about, is focused on fighting against injustices and regaining our power. And although in the overall scheme of things, physical content and 
streaming services are hardly the biggest <laughs> topic for me to be dealing with. It's still something that's hitting home for me in this present moment because it's affecting me, you know? So that's what I'm talking about a lot. So I've gone physical myself, spending more than I should. I spend a bit more than I should, to be honest. Um, but even then, I'm like, that's not that much money. It could be far worse. And there was another thing I thought about anyway, because I, I get I get like purchase guilt. I feel bad when I buy things for myself. I'm like, oh, shouldn't really got that or you shouldn't have that. Uh, you know, it's annoying. It's because um, you always know the financial repercussion after. But then at the same time, it's like, those. Why, why should those things exist and you can't have them? That's the thing, isn't it? Like, why, if they exist, why should someone else be more entitled to it than you are? So it's about finding that worth of self, isn't it? Say, you know what, well, I am worthy of having this and I do deserve to have this. Um, and me personally, I do like having the collection. I'm not someone that would just collect anything for nothing. You know, there's no point just collecting everything and hoarding it. It's got to be something of substance. Like, for instance, the music collection I have on CD, I picked every single one of them out. It was like, that's, I want that album. I want that album. I like that singer. I want that. I like that band. And it's been the same with my movies. You know, I wouldn't just buy something just to fill a shelf. It's like, there's no chance. It's got to be something that means something to me where I want to finish a collection. Um, or there's a, it's a great film that I remember. Or it's an upgrade to the current one from DVD, for instance, to Blu-ray. Because what what's happening here, I'm noticing, is the video quality on Blu-rays are absolutely sharp. They're incredible. It's almost like the bit rate is higher than the streaming platforms give for normal HD content. So, so, so I find Blu-ray personally is floating between HD content on streaming and Ultra HD. It's like in between the two. So it's quite crazy. It's not, it's not poor quality at all. It's actually quite incredible. But DVD quality is a lot more subpar. But it's watchable. But when you're looking at buying used content and it's maybe an extra pound or 50 pence or something stupid for Blu-ray, it's like that's a huge upgrade. You're better off doing it. Um, so if you don't have the hardware, for instance, like get a Blu-ray player. But what people probably forget as well is a lot of consoles, I think from about Xbox One onwards, Xbox One, PS3, I'm not sure if PS3 had it. I think they did. I don't think Xbox 360 did. I think a PS3 did, and I think the Xbox One had it. But from then on, they've all had Blu-ray players. And some even have the latest ones, even have Ultra HD players. And that makes it very valuable, you know, for that reason alone. The fact that it can, pl it can play these discs because the actual individual players can be quite expensive. So it's worth thinking about that. You can get two in one, really, by getting a games console and uh, it'll play your Blu-rays too, if you go that route. I like to have a dedicated player, but it's not the point, if, if, you know, means um, you can do to play. But I do like the fact that like I said that you can connect a disk drive to the laptop and things, and it just turns it into a media hub then. You can, you can watch your films, your TV shows, but also your music. And again, I know you could say that you've got the streaming platforms, and I get it. Streaming's good, but then on top of all the other services, it adds up so much over time. Once you own these things, you can go long periods without spending. That's the whole point. And, you know, as we're seeing now, it, it happens. Something happens to someone. They get cancelled. Their content gets taken off of the streaming services. Or they remove it themselves because they don't like this. They, they have like an internal battle with it. Or there's a license agreement issue. Um, and you subscribe for that huge period. Yeah, you've enjoyed the content, but it gets taken away from you at some point because it's no longer available. If you own the CD, it never goes away. So, I mean, look, the swings of roundabouts, there's good parts to, uh, to, to all. I think it's worth maintaining a, at least one streaming package for now while building up a library. Um, because then you're staying relevant with the latest, but it's really not getting caught up with every package because it all freaking adds up and goes crazy. Um, yeah, the one thing I do like about Netflix, although Netflix is the one I hate the most at the same time, because I think Netflix is the most greedy. But one thing I like about Netflix with TV shows in particular is that it transitions immediately onto the next episode. And I'm not sure. I know Prime doesn't do that. I don't know if Disney Plus does that. But I always find that's useful. You know, you want it to transition into the next one. But, um, yeah, at the same time, you can do that with your bloody discs, you know. But like I say, this is just wild how many films you can get. I literally just grabbed some more. Um, I shouldn't be spending any more money, to be honest. I've spent too much. I've got, a, I've got a budget. I have to budget, and I've got to say, look, enough's enough, because you can just keep collecting and replacing for the rest of your life, you know. But it was a few Disney films, and I just thought, you know what? I just watched Beauty and the Beast, the animated one, because I got that and the, and the, and the, feet, the um, action feature one. Because I quite I like it. And straight away while I was watching it, I was like, bloody hell, I was going to do a video, but I couldn't be asked in the end. Um, but it was ridiculously sharp. The picture quality was outstanding. And I thought for animated ones, it doesn't matter if it's DVD or Blu-ray. But I kid you not, 
it makes a difference. It is vibrant. It is absolutely beautiful. And I was like, that is incredible. And it's animated. Immediately, I was like, no, I'm not waiting around. So I did the four for five pound. Literally cost me five pound. What's five pound? You know, to American, it's maybe about six dollars. You know, for that, I've got, I've just ordered um, Jungle Book, Snow White, Cinderella, and The Little Mermaid. All of that for five pounds on Blu-ray, not CD, not DVD, Blu-ray. I was like, you know what? I want to just collect the animated ones because, again, what I'm doing here, I'm purposely doing, is getting rid of Disney Plus. It's good for now. It's a good service, but a lot of the a lot of the content is also on the other platforms. Not all the content, but some of it is that stuff that's integrated from the other platforms. Um, but I've been collecting the Marvel films. I'm now collecting the animated for Disney ones and some of the main shows, the main films. Um, I already had the Pirates of the Caribbean collection. So you know what I mean? So all of a sudden, it starts to become less important to have it. And that's where I'm getting. Um, so then I can just cut that one off. It's like, boom, that's a tick. And then we'll work, I'll work on all the others later. But Netflix really is more convenient because of like things like Big Bang Theory for me. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice, I think. It'd be nice for me to see my daughter's investing in things she truly enjoys. You know, her collection would look entirely different to mine. And I think that's what's important is you build a collection that I think corresponds to your personality. It's like if someone saw your collection, they maybe know a bit more about you just by looking at it. You know, we all like different music. We like different movies, like different TV shows. And it's like an extension of so that'd be um, be nice just to know, just to see her proud of whatever it is she chooses to 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 embrace. But like I said, for the sake of eight, for the sake of ten pounds, you have literally eight tangible items in your hand. For me, that's a freaking bargain. That is a bargain, and you do that enough times, you know, you do that over. Let's say, let's say you did that one week every month. Ten pound. That's all you spent. That's eight items. By the end of the year, you're like 80, 88, 96, 96 items in a year between cds dvds and blu-rays and i think that's a lot of content um and even for a child like you know what i mean like a teenager they're sort of building towards getting away from those platforms too um but like if you look if you look at the games in video game industry they try they're desperately trying to stop the physical media now so it is getting quite scary the way the business models are working it's all becoming license agreements only or sub or subscription based and what that does it just keeps you tied permanently to paying out that's the problem do you know what I mean? Let's say, let's say your resources were really, really you, you don't know it yet, but let's say next year is a really hard time for your resources and you're like, I can't really keep doing all these subscriptions. Because you prepared in advance and you was, you was buying an awful lot of content, it won't hit you so hard. Yeah, you might miss this show or miss that thing and that one, but it's not the end of the world. You've got plenty of content for free because you already own it. Um, yeah, the outlay at first can be quite back, quite heavy, but I don't think it's that heavy. You know, like I said, with the deals I've been doing, it's the equivalent of, I'd say that what I've spent so far is the equivalent of maybe a three months worth of content from a streaming service in terms of the fees. But after that, I don't have to keep buying things. I've got enough there to enjoy now for a longer period. Because um, I have to find level of self-control of it. Otherwise, it's pointless. You're replacing it, but you're sort of just making it the, the collection huge or too quick. And there has to be some sustainability to it, you know? Um but yeah, I'm not going to keep doing content on this, of course. It's just where my mind's at at the moment because that's what my money's going on. And I've like, I've literally overspent. But I think it's one of those things where you overspend, but it's not that dramatic. Do you know what I mean? Like I've spent, I must have spent about £100 here on Blu-rays and dis and t TV box sets like that, the 70s show and all sorts of stuff, the Harry Potter on Blu-ray, all this stuff and so many other Blu-rays. Like there's literally, I've had about 30 Blu-rays at this point, I think. Um, and you'd argue it's a lot of money overall. But that's because the box set itself was quite dear to get all the, t the 70 shows, to get any TV series all at once. But it's because they're harder to get as well. But um, if £100 on anything else, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Your weekly shop and your groceries isn't, you know, it, you buy something else, you buy a phone, or you buy any piece of technology or anything and everything is always usually a lot more money than that. So it's like, what has that done? It's actually allowed me a level of freedom in my life. And I'm really proud of my collection. I'm happy with it. So it's getting away from that feeling that you've sp overspent. You know, it only seems because you. It only seems that you're overspent because you've got so much for your money. You know that's really where the problem is. It's like if if it was if it was like three items, you'd say, "Oh, okay," but because it's loads of items, you go, "Did you really need that many?" But it's because I'm building towards the future a little bit here. Um, but yeah.
hopefully I'll be, hopefully I'm beginning to inspire her my daughter for instance to start building her collection too we'll see <laughs>